Hi, I'm Neil and welcome to another video. In today's video, I'm going to show you how using little bits of glass and crystals like these, you can create really cool and unique portraits for your bride and grooms like these. So, let's crack on. So, I hope you're well. It's currently August in the UK, and that means I'm slap bang in the middle of my wedding season at the moment, so I'm crazy busy. This summer's been amazing though, and I've been lucky enough to photograph the weddings of so many amazing couples, and I've got many more to come as well, which I'm really excited about. It's just the, the only downside to this time of year for me, and I'm sure uh, many other wedding photographers out there will, will relate to this. It's just the sheer amount of editing that I've got to do at the moment, but I'm not complaining it beats having a real job. So in today's video, I'm going to show you how you can create some really cool and creative effects in camera, so there's no Photoshop required, using different bits of glass and crystals. Now, although I love these techniques, I don't actually use them very often. I think there's a real time and a place where they work well. I'll maybe use them once or twice at a wedding, sometimes not at all, because I think there's a fine line between these effects looking really good and effective, where they enhance the photograph, and it well being just a bit cheesy. But in the right circumstances, and I'm going to tell you how I do use each piece of glass, which I'm going to show you, they can create really cool effects. But I do think that when it comes to shooting through glass like this, less is more. So to begin with, all the shots you are now looking at were created by me placing an object, be it glass, a prism, my phone, fairy lights, a crystal, or really just anything that I see lying around at a wedding, right in front of my camera lens. And as I mentioned, all the effects which you see in my images and which you're looking at now were created in camera. I don't ever add anything in Photoshop. It's quite important to me that everything is done in camera. Now I personally find that the best focal length for shooting through things like this is my favorite focal length. And you'll know that if you see my previous videos, and that's 35 millimeters. Now, I'm not sure why, but that just seems to be, in my opinion anyway, the sweet spot focal length for using techniques like this. Now, longer focal lengths do work, and you can still get really nice effects from them. It's just I personally prefer using the 35 millimeter uh, when, I'm, when I'm using these techniques. But the best thing you can do is just play around. The more you experiment, the more you'll get to, to, to get a feel about what these crystals and glass can give you. And the other thing to remember when using this technique is that the wider your aperture, the better. So if you shoot at a narrow aperture and you have a bigger depth of field, then you may be able to tell what it is that you're putting in front of your camera lens. And that just lessens the effectiveness. So I would recommend that if you're trying going to try this technique, you shoot at something like F2 or ideally even wider. I have a 35mm 1.4 lens and I like to shoot these images at 1.4 because that just really blurs out the object which I'm putting in front of the camera lens and that makes the whole shot more effective. Now another thing to mention is that you can obviously you can shoot through virtually anything so don't hold yourself back. Obviously whatever you put in front of your camera is going to have some sort of effect on the image so if you like shots like this then the biggest piece of advice that I can give you is to experiment yourself by putting different things in front of your camera, whatever you see lying around. Now I have certain things in my camera bag which I'm going to show you in a second, but I'll also often just shoot through things which I find at wedding venues such as Candles, they're a big favorite of mine. There's some examples here where I've shot through candles. Now, most of the crystals which I have in my bag, I bought from Amazon. This one, for example, the Suncatcher, was bought from Amazon. But I've also bought things from antique shops and market stalls before. So the best thing is just to keep your eye out for things like this, that you think, oh, I wonder what would happen if I put my camera lens right behind something like this. And just stay curious. And that's where the fun comes, I think, that when you buy things like this, you have no real idea, or certainly I 
I don't have any idea about what it is that I'm going to get, but it's always fun just to try. And you might find that you just come across something that works really well, but I think the fun really is in just trying new things out. So I'm not going to show you everything that I've used in the past, and uh, just because I don't have it all to hand, I don't, some of it I don't own anymore. But obvious things which I'm not including are a prism. They can look really effective. Uh, I just don't use them anymore. And fairy lights. I used to quite like using those, but I found that they got a little bit cliche. So I stopped using those and tried to find things that are a bit more unique that to my knowledge other people weren't using. So the first piece of glass which I'm going to talk you through is this, which I bought off Amazon and it's called a sun catcher prism. Again, if you just search on Amazon, you'll find lots of things like this. Um, but what I really like about this in particular is the coloured crystals just at the top because they can create really nice areas of bokeh. So I'm going to show you now how I use this technique. Bear in mind that this is my 16 to 35 2.8 lens because I'm filming on my 35mm lens, but it's the 35mm lens that I would usually use to use this technique because I want to shoot, as mentioned earlier, really wide apertures. This does go to 2.8, which will give me a nice effect, but it's, it's really much more effective at an aperture such as 1.4. So to start with, people often ask me, how close will I place the glass to my camera lens? And the answer is, it's, it goes right up on it. Well, it's touching the camera lens like this. And that's when I find I get the most effective looking bokeh. Now, the, the problem to be aware of when you're using something like this is that for the colours to really look vibrant and really affect the exposure, then it's best to have a light source lighting up this as well. So, what I will often try and do is use this technique alongside a window. So I, if I have a window here, then if I um, put the, the crystals here and then my camera lens there, then the, uh, the crystals are being lit by the natural window light. Because I say, if you don't have a light source on, on the crystals, then they just look a bit dull and you won't really get the effect. Another technique which works well is to use your phone if you turn the, t the torch on, on your phone, and then you can hold your phone against the lights, against the crystals like this, to light them up, and then shoot like that. And that can actually work really nicely. You look a bit silly <laughs> doing this, but it does give you the result that you want. So that's the two ways I try to do it, to light up the crystals um, using either my phone or natural light. But just be aware that if you don't light up the crystals, then the effect won't be as impressive. Now the next crystal I'm going to show you is this one. This is called a teardrop prism, and it's very similar in terms of how I use this to the sun catcher crystal which I've just showed you. So again, I'll put it right up against the camera lens like this, so it's really close, and again, it requires a light source to really get the most out of it. But what I really like about this one in particular, because there's lots of different types of this crystal you'll see if you do look online, but this one has lots of colors within it. So if I put it quite close to the camera there, hopefully you can see that as I rotate it round, there's just various colors in there. So again, it's an effect that you don't always know what you're going to get because it's a little bit random, but I really like that. And the more you use these techniques, as weird and strange as it sounds, you'll start to know what each will give you. So although this is very similar to the sun catcher, the effect it gives is slightly different. And because I've been using them for quite a while, I know what the effect looks like and I know what the subtle differences are. So the more you experiment, the more you use, you'll, you'll get to know what each of these will give you. But this one, I say, is really nice because of the colors that are in there. Okay, so the next one is called a fractal. Now, if you've seen some of my previous videos, you'll see me using this, and I will link to videos up here and in the description where I've used this. But although it looks like a knuckle duster, it's actually a really cool piece of glass. So the, the central area is just clear, just nice uh, clear glass, but you have these sort of rectangular 
um, areas around the edge, which just gives a really different look. Again, it's really key to point out that this is a, this stuff is very what we would call in England Marmite. You either love it or you hate it. But I just thought, find that using it maybe once at a wedding or once every two or three weddings, it can just give you something a little bit more unique. Now this is the most expensive crystal which I own um, because it's it's custom made, whereas the others I've just bought, they're not really meant designed for photographers. I've just picked them up at various places, whereas this one is actually designed uh, for photographers. And again, I will put a link in the description to where you can buy the fractal from if it's something that you'd like to um, experiment with. Now the next one I'm going to show you technically isn't glass or a crystal, but I thought it would was, it was be good to include it in this video because it's, it's another way of creating a cool in-camera effect, and that's by using your phone. Now I've made a dedicated video for this technique, again which I will link to up here. But just a quick summary is basically where you put your phone right up against the camera lens and it creates a really interesting looking reflection. Again, it works really well on a 35mm lens and again, in the right circumstances, it can be a really effective technique to give you a creative look to your portraits and it's something which I've used quite a lot. This is probably the technique which I use the most out of all the ones that I'm showing you in this video and I use it as well, not just for portraits, I've used it for moments and documentary images as well. So it's very straightforward, it's also good as well because I always have my phone on me in my pocket so it's always to hand should I wish to use it. So it takes a little bit of getting used to but it's a very simple technique as I say, it's all about putting the phone right up to your camera lens like this and just tilting it slightly to create a reflection. So again, just another simple way to create something which is going to be very different to what most photographers are producing. Okay, so the last piece of glass which I'm going to show you is this one, which is a crystal ball. And again, I've also produced a How I Shot It video where I've used this uh, crystal ball to give me a creative effect. So again, I will link to that video above if you'd like to see how I've used that. But this one works very well in quite specific circumstances. And that is, if you're ever in a room where there's lots of, say, fairy lights or candles, and basically what this will do is by putting it, again, right in front of the camera lens like this, it almost creates a look which looks like fireworks. So whatever you see in front of you, whether it be you know two or three candles or some fairy lights, this sort of multiplies what is in front of you by a hundred. And it just gives an effect which I say is very, very unique. But yeah, definitely worth trying to get hold of if you do want to create images like this, which I say I think is just really unique and I don't think it's possible in any other way to create these looks without using a crystal like this one. So I hope you found this video useful. As I say, what I really want to get across is just how important it is to play around and experiment by putting various things in front of your lens and just see what happens. The crystals that I've shown you here are just a very, very sort of small number of what's available. There's countless possibilities out there. So just try and shoot through different things and just see what happens. The more obscure looking the glass, the better and you don't know what the effect is going to be and I say sometimes you'll be like whoa like and it's really exciting when you you do that for the first time so go out there try and get your hands on as much of this glass and crystals and all sorts as you can and just see what happens when you put this sort of thing in front of your lens so I hope you've enjoyed this video and found it useful thank you very much again for watching and I will see you next time